Let's get nuts. <laughs> Well, hello, everybody. We good? Ah, oh, man. Of course, I'm having technical difficulties today. Everything's kind of choppy. Hopefully, it uh, doesn't last. Hopefully, it uh, all clears up. Sorry about that. But what's going on, everybody? How's your day been? It's here. We're finally here. Oh, my God. And guess what? The people who don't like James Gunn hate the slate. The people who are okay with James Gunn are like, eh. And the people who love James Gunn love it. Aren't we fun? Aren't we fun, everybody? What's happening? All right. Make sure you guys smash that like thumbs up. Hit that notification bell. Do all that stuff. Subscribe. Everything. Got all the sock meds around me. And, you know. And, uh, you know, just subscribe to all that. Do all that. Hit that like, thumbs up. Share the stream. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. But, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, But, yeah, of course, the topic today is strictly the new DCU slate. I mean, let's face it. It's the only thing. Only thing that's going to be discussed today. No tweets. No nothing. Straight into it after I talk to you guys right here. Oh, that's, yeah, a little worrisome. A little worrisome. There's no mention of Constantine. Uh, yeah, I do worry about that. I will say that, Carlos. MSGT, uh, what's going on? I noticed that, uh, according to Wikipedia, it's still happening. I'm still thinking, uh, yeah. They, I mean, Gunn did say Elseworlds. He did use that term, so it could still very much end up being in that area. So, hoy hoy, Mr. Jason McKenzie. Good to see you. Color you intrigued? Good. Mr. Eric, since guns on record classifying Matt Reeves' Batman stuff as Elseworlds, I would say, yeah, exactly. That's what I was just talking about right there. What's going on to run? Hey, Dave, are uh, very interesting and excited about the DC news today. Looking forward to what it turns out to be. Yeah, should be interesting for sure. Should be interesting for sure. So, all right. Um, let's see. So we got DC is say. Oh, okay. So we got Lawrence here. Lawrence here, of course, is, uh, I mean, he, he, he obviously is a fan of James Gunn. So, like I said, it depends on how, it may, I think a lot of it, I think a lot of people, it depends on what you feel about James Gunn. I think that's what it is. That really determine. that's just the way it is nowadays, you know, it's the way it is. Uh, that's, that's the way I'm looking at it right there. If you don't like the guy, yeah, you're, you're gonna, you're like, that guy sucks. Sucks, man. Sucks. Yeah, what do you guys think of James Gunn, James Wan directing Swamp Thing? Ah, remember he took a shot at the first, he was producer on the first Swamp Thing. They didn't mention a director, but I think they actually do have a director. We'll, we'll, get, to we'll get to it, we'll get to it, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. So what's going on, Mr. Uh, J.D. McRae? Tony Movie Chappy, D9, Neil Blomkamp fan. It's been a while since I've seen you in the chat. Uh, what's going on right here? What up, Dave? What up, people? So the DC slate is just all right. Did it blow my mind? No, but I'm intrigued and interested. Just glad that the wait is over and now we can prepare for what's coming. Yes, there you go. Good way to look at it there, Jose. Clay Talon recasting. <laughs> Clay, you need <laughs> it's all you know, the recasting of Cavill. I know that was like your the thing that you hated the most. I know we all hated it too, but so it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I'll try to explain a little bit more too when it comes to what happened there when we get to that portion of uh, obviously what James Gunn said about the recasting of of uh, Henry Cavill. So especially if you're going to have another older Batman and plan on uh, to keep Gal, Jason and Ezra. I know, I know, Clay, you've been in my mentions many times mentioning that, but hopefully I can maybe shine a little bit more light on that today. Uh, yeah, we got Jason already said hi to you. Jade, what's going on? Only a handful of projects got my interest, but I just don't see why keep the old DCEU actors in the DCU. You know, that's something we'll be discussing, of course. I'm literally only uh, interested in Supergirl project. Okay, so are you literally going to only watch that at at all, Jacob? So you're not going to watch any of the other projects at all. You're just going to just watch the Supergirl project movie okay i'm gonna hold you to that christopher what's going on good to see you we got stephanie t right here stephanie uh is not a fan of james gunn so naturally (laughs) it's just you know could have guessed that obviously ziggs what's going on 
Good to see you. All right. We got Saggy here. Yes, we are here. We are Okay. So what else we got? New slate looks great, says David. All right. Let's see. Cortez is here. Cautiously optimistic. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, I'll watch it, but fuck. You'll watch it, but fuck? Okay. While being? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Ah, uh, Game City Savior. What's going on? Good to see you. We got Doug right here. Big Morrison. Yeah? Yeah? Animal Man. Definitely coming. Ooh. So, yeah. I know. Maybe you might have to do uh, a Patreon stream, too, this uh, weekend. Might have to do that. So, uh, James Slate made me cry, but not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. Travis, what's going on? Batman and Robin, I'm happy. Happy Tuesday. Uh, okay, happy Tuesday to you. So uh, Travis is happy. We, we had a little discussion last night because he got some info. Wasn't, you know, we were sharing info that we were getting all right there. So it's good. It's good. It's good. Let's see who else we got. Sean Breeze Collectibles, what's happening? Good to see you. All right, we got Ralph V. Not not committed. Okay, okay. Twitter's insane today. Absolutely, mega fan. Yes, 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 yes. Let's see. We got Jeff, the Echo Step Co. Personally, I'm just not a fan of a prequel story for to Wonder Woman. Just why? I don't know. I was kind of intrigued by what they're going to be doing with that, to be honest, because I think there's a world there that they can uh, they can explore. They can explore. You know. Sire, let's see. Only the authority looks good if they come into that. Um, sounds like that's going to be the second movie, so I think that's already very much in the process. So I think it very much is going to come to fruition. Uh, so bang, Van, who's the writers for the Lanterns? Jeff Johns? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I mean, who knows? There's, uh, yeah, Jeff Johns is still going to be peppered through there somehow, somewhere. So, Victor, I like gun stuff. There are things on the list, on that list, that I thought were okay, meh, and I, and I loved it. Okay, see, there you go. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. All right, who else we got? Anybody else new? We got, uh, we got, no, yeah, we got movie guy right here. I'll wait for the trailers to get excited. Yeah, trailers are a big thing. Jacob R., oops, I meant uh, give me uh, Shirley Walker's Superman bat. Oh, there you go, Shirley Walker, you know, some praise. To clarify, stateside card, I'll watch every one of these announced projects because I know DC has tons of potential. James has shown he can put weird stuff on screen and uh, make it great. Okay, so there you go. Somebody right there. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was like one of those things that was crazy yesterday because, um, I, I, you know, I'm surprised that nothing really leaked. I think there were some people that couldn't help themselves because, again, egos. Egos, uh, you know, like I talked about Scoopy Pants yesterday, couldn't help himself. But take that uh, take that picture as he was approaching uh, Warner, Warner Brothers. And he had to make sure that he got his Tesla logo on his steering wheel right in the picture to let you know that he's the man. He's the man. He's the man. He is definitely the man. He's he's going there. He's doing all that stuff. And uh, yeah, but uh, but then of course there was other people too that were like when they were in the know. I was like, whoa, whoa. I, I told I posted on Patreon. I only gave one thing because I I was given the slate too, and I was I, you know I was having discussions with people, but I was like you know again I when people say don't say anything, I tend tend to not say anything. But you know. Um, it was just kind of one of those things where I was like, all right, well, I mean, the main thing that I, that I think a lot of us were concerned with when it came to the slate was the fact that, uh, what, what's going to be happening with Matt Reeves, Bat Batman, is that going to be safe? Is that going to be its own thing? I kept hearing that there, there, it was on the table that they were going to incorporate Battinson into the main DCU. So I was just kind of going, okay, am I going to have to prepare for this? How are they going to, you know, I'm curious. I was intrigued by how they would integrate him into the main DCU stream but then as as soon as I got sent the the slate I was like oh okay good whoo all right we're gonna get another Batman hey nothing wrong with that you know you know I'm a diehard Batman fan the more Batman out there the merrier it's raining Batman I'm not talking, I mean geez we're gonna get two I that sounded weird I know but I'm you know I'm excited I'm excited because come on more bat more Batmans, or men, whatever you want to call it, but yeah. So, 
yeah, I'm glad that that stayed the way it did. Uh, I don't think, you know, it was just one of those things where it was like a money thing. That was the main thing. It was like the money thing. So anyways, guys, all right. I'm talking too much, uh, you know, pre-show here. But I mean, I, like I said, like I said, this is uh, the, the, the entire stream is going to be about that. Make sure uh, after this, if you want to get uh, Ben Everts, Ben Everts, Mr. Everts, he's going to be doing his Real Anarchy stream after mine, I think at uh, 6.30 my time. So do the math. Uh, I think 9.30 Eastern time, yeah, that Ben's going to be doing his stream. Uh, I bumped up the stream because I was like, you know what, I might as well. And sadly, I mean, I wish I could have just went live as the thing was happening, but, uh, you know, I posted a little short, so. All right, so let's kind of dive into it, guys. Let's dive into what's happening and everything. And uh, I, I, I did run some polls to see where everybody's at uh, on Twitter and on um and on uh, YouTube, so we'll look at those results. But first off, I wanted to uh, remind you guys about MoviePalette.com, of course. MoviePalette.com. Make sure, uh, uh, make sure you guys, you know, if you want to get yourself a uh, canvas of your favorite movie and you want to get the color palette, which I have right there of the Matrix, right above me. And I do want to have more. Eventually, I want to have a whole wall of these. But yes, go to MoviePalette.com. Uh, of course, they reached out to me to do a collaboration, and they gave me a discount code that you guys can use to get an extra 15% off. It's all down below. Use Junkie15 if you want to get yourself uh, a canvas that has your favorite movie palette that looks like a delicious candy bar. It really does. It's a unique idea. I like it. So uh, there you go. All right. So now that we're done plugging away at all that stuff, yeah, do what Ben said. Hit that like, thumbs up. All right. So first off, let's go ahead and go to the Twitter poll right here. So I asked everybody, how are we feeling about the new DC Universe so far? And I said, love it. Most of it, most, well, I, I typoed right there. I should have said most of it is fine. Uh, and then, of course, eh, like a couple of things. And then, of course, we have done with DC. And that's what won right there. 32.4% done with DC. So does this mean that everybody who clicked that option, are you going to not talk about DC? Are you not going to come into mentions and discourage people who are excited about new DC? I hope so. If you're done with DC, please be done with DC. Okay? Please. That's all I ask. Don't be jumping into people and having arguments and, you know, being all crazy and all, you know, jumping on things and using crazy hashtags. Stop it. You know, if you want to celebrate what you liked about DC prior, sure, go ahead. But are we going to just, I mean, I still have, I still, I get the same guys over and over and over and over and over again in my mentions, even though they're done with DC. I'm like, okay, then stop talking about it. I'm going to have to start muting, sadly. I'm going to have to start muting. So I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, uh, but they're not done with DC. You know, we're all too, you know, we, we're, we all think our opinions are the best things uh, that, that can be said. So obviously it's not going to happen. Uh, maybe some people will just be like fully done and then hopefully find something they actually do like and, you know, celebrate all that. That'd be pretty sweet. I, and, I, and I totally am all for that. Find something that you like. And keep on talking about that. But don't go and discourage people who are excited for this, okay? I mean, there's things that I'm not excited for in the nerd world. I don't go into people's mentions and going like, You really shouldn't like this, man. It sucks. Freaking sucks, bro. Fucking sucks. And then we move over to YouTube. YouTube, a little bit different. So when it came to the Love It... Uh, we got 682 votes right here. We got Love It, 18%. Most of it is good, 24%. Eh, 41%. And that's the one that won. So, Done With DC, when it came to the YouTube poll, is actually in last place. Interesting. So, there you go. Two different results when it comes to the polls that I ran on both of these. So, there you go. All right. Now, let's get with it. Here we go right here. I'm going to use the uh, Hollywood Reporter right here and go through this. So uh, buckle up, folks. We're going to be going over uh, the slate right here. DC Slate Unveiled, new Batman, Supergirl movies, a Green Lantern TV show, and more from James Gunn and Peter Saffron. The DC Studios bosses shared 10 projects. Mind you, apparently this is only 
half, half of what they actually are working on. Apparently, there's like 20 projects. It's going to be, it's, it's insane. Talk the exit of Henry Cavill and the potential future of Ezra Miller as The Flash as they introduce a slate of big heroes and lesser known characters. The stakes are massive for us for Warner Brothers Discovery, says Saffron. So here we go. Um, the first thing that was mentioned, the very first thing, which I was like, oh, thank God. Oh, oh geez. I think we were all like, God, thank Ah, oh, thank freaking God. We were just like, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, please. Oh, my God. Was the fact that the Batman, the Batman is safe. The Batman is safe. You know, that was the first thing, the release date, which is October 3rd, 2025. Yes, we have to wait two and a half years. <laughs> I mean, we get the Penguin series in the meantime, but my God, we have to wait two and a half years for the, for the Batman part due, part two. So we have to wait at least that long when it comes to uh, when it comes to the Batman. But hey, at least the Batman is very much in its own universe. We're good. We're good. We're good. So uh, now after, uh, uh, you know, promising fans that they would have something to show on February 1st. Gunn and Saffron have unveiled the first part of their slate. It's a combination of big and known heroes along with lesser known characters who may just become big like the once obscure heroes of Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy. It's very true. I was hoping there would be a mixed bag like this. So, And this is what Gunn had to say right here. He said, well, uh, one of our strategies is to take our diamond characters, which is Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and we use them to prop up other characters that people don't know. It's a good idea. Saffron said to build those lesser known properties into the diamond properties for tomorrow. While plans may shift, which they will for sure, remember, things might get, you never know. Things could get canceled. Things might get shifted. Who knows? But uh, here are the initial uh, slate for Chapter 1 right here. And right off the bat, there you have an image of the group right here, Creature Commandos. A lot of people are like, especially when you saw the slate, you're like, what the hell? Creature Commandos? What is going on there? Who knows? Um, but yeah, here we go. Creature Commandos, an animated seven-episode series written by Gunn that is already in production. Originally a team of classic monsters assembled to fight Nazis. This is a modern take on the concept. The voice actors have yet to be cast, but the executives are looking to find people who can voice the animated characters and also portray the live-action versions when the anti-heroes to show up in the movies and shows. One of the things that James Gunn did express was that anybody who's being cast is also going to be utilized for video games, TV, and animation. So no matter what, they're trying to like you know cover all grounds. So if you're cast as this character, you're going to be that character in all the mediums, which I think that's good because it is a little weird. Like when you watched What If, Tom Holland didn't voice Spider-Man, did he? Like some of them were like not voicing the characters in the animation, you know, I, which was a weird thing right there. Then we get to Waller. Of course, we all knew this was going to be coming up. Amanda Waller's uh, spinoff series, uh, the spinoff of Gunn's own HBO Max hit series, Peacemaker. Viola Davis will return as the ruthless and morally ambiguous head of the government task force. It is being written by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, the creator of Doom Patrol TV series. So cool. And then we get to the movies, the first big movie right here which, of course, is Superman Legacy, the movie featuring the Man of Steel that Gunn is writing and may direct. He is going to end up directing, guys. I know. I don't like it either, too, but he's going to be directing. I'm pretty sure he's going to be directing. It saves a little bit of money, and it just kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, I didn't want him to direct it. I'm like, dude, just do the producing stuff, writing. That's fine. But, of course, I think he might end up directing. But you never know. Although no commitments on the end have been made while the two previous titles uh, are meant to be um, uh, arperatives, whatever, in Savron's words. Superman is the true kickoff of the duo's DCU plans. It's not an origin story, Saffron says. It focuses on Superman balancing, balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. He is the embodiment of truth, justice, and the American way. Oh, God. He said the American way, guys. Oh, no. Oh, no, we're not supposed to say that anymore. Racist. Racist. 
Saffron, get him. Get him. He said the American way. Remember, we're supposed to omit that. Eee. Yeah, I know. A lot of people are already commenting about that. Yes, the backlash has already started. The backlash has already started. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, I've already seen people tweet out that, like, oh, he said the American way because, you know, uh, people who live here really hate this country. So, you know, but, you know, it's just an old saying. It's an old saying. I hope uh, Saffron doesn't have to apologize. My God. Uh, anyway, so uh, when uh, he said he, uh, he is kindness in a world that thinks that kindness is old fashioned. The release date of July 11th, 2025 has been penciled in. That won't be the release date for this Superman movie. It'll probably shift. I don't know why they, they, they set these release dates. I don't get it because they always change. So I will bet, you know, it's 100% going to end up changing right now. I know. Who cares? Who really does care when it comes to all that? When it comes to what, what he said. But I already saw people that were getting upset about it. And I'm like, here we go. That's just the way we are nowadays. Uh, so there you go. Superman Legacy. I'm very curious on who they cast and how they, uh, how, what's going to be happening with it. Why is it called Legacy? I mean, I guess it's that. You know, I mean, it's not straying too far from what Man of Steel, you know, the Henry, you know, Henry Cavill Superman and what Zack Snyder was trying to do with Superman. Uh, you know, trying to do like a little bit of a balance. I mean, I mean, I guess it's going to be probably more of a balance, maybe, I guess, because, you know, when it came to Man of Steel, he didn't know too much until he went to, into the scout ship. And then he realized who he was, who where he came from and everything. But it was still quite the balance when it came to BVS, for sure. I mean, that's what Zach was trying to emphasize. Zach and Terrio were trying to emphasize when it came to BVS. So I'm glad that they're going to be taking that approach, at least. So. Anyway, so we got the lanterns. We got the lanterns right here. So this is going to be interesting. So obviously this is going to be a retooled version of what was already being created because this Green Lantern show has been talked about for, I don't know, 27 years. My God, how many, how long have we been talking about this Green Lantern TV show? But Greg Berlanti, there's a name that we all know. Long in the works right there. Green Lantern's TV series has been scrapped, and the duo have parted ways with the longtime DC series. Uh, you know, so right there. It's already talking about how, you know, that's been scrapped, but retold, I would say, more, uh, more or less. In the place will be a new take on the Space Cops with power rings. Our vision for this is very much in the vein of true detective. Intriguing. Hopefully True Detective Season 1, because that was the best season. Uh, it's terrestrial-based, which is good. Keep it out there. Keep it out in the cosmos. Let's not have much happening on Earth. I'd rather have Green Lantern out in the cosmos. I think a lot of us would agree. It will feature a predominant Lantern heroes, Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, and it is one of the most important shows they have in development. This plays a big, a really big role in leading into a main story we are telling across film and TV. You better believe something's going to be happening in the cosmos, some big baddie out there in the freaking stars. Maybe something's going to be happening with that, but it's going to hopefully lead into a lot of a lot of things when it comes to all uh, when it comes to this. Then you got the authority. I will admit I had no idea what the authority was. I, I think a lot of us probably were like, "What? The authority? What the like? What? Author? What? What's going on here? What's this?" A movie based on a team of superheroes with rather extreme methods of protecting the planet that first originated in the late 1990s under an influential imprint known as Wildstorm, run by artist and now head of DC Publishing, Jim Lee. Yeah, I did a little research, and I'm like, all right, interesting, almost like an anti-Justice League. One of the things that, D uh, that the DCU is... That it's not just a story of heroes and villains, said Gunn. Not every film and TV show is going to be about good guy versus bad guys. Giant things from the skies comes, uh, sky comes, and good guy wins. You know, not the same stuff. So he's trying not to do the cliche things, trying to do something different right here, which I respect this. There are white hats, black hats, and gray hats. They are kind of like Jack Nicholson and A Few Good Men. They know that you want them on the wall, or at least they believe that. So... Very interesting. Wasn't there? Yes, there is a, and I, and when I was looking this stuff right here, there is a Superman in authority, in uh, the authority story 
that uh, is out there, which I'm, I plan on picking up. I'm kind of wondering when it, uh, when it comes to the vodka stream, I can't wait to talk to the guys, especially Scott. And uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that he probably knows about uh, this group right here, but should be interesting. Should be interesting. Kind of like, you know, a, you know, a bunch of anti-heroes, the anti-justice league. So I'm actually pretty uh, curious about that. Then we got Paradise Lost. Now, when I heard about this, I went, all right, that's that's a pretty this is a pretty interesting way to be like, all right, how are you going to incorporate Wonder Woman when it comes to this slate? Well, this is not too bad. I mean, obviously, we, we, we did hear that Patty Jenkins was trying to do like a spinoff series that had to do with Themyscira. Of course, it wasn't a prequel series. It was just Themyscira. So I think they took that idea and they're like, well, let's make it before Diana was born. So Paradise Lost is going to be the duo described this HBO Max series as a Game of Thrones style drama set on the all female island that uh, that is Wonder Woman's birthplace, the Mascara filled with political intrigue and scheming between power players. It takes place before the events of the Wonder Woman films. So that means... All right, so that's the question about Gal, and we'll talk about that, you know, later. But the fact, the fact of the matter, matter is, it's like, all right, that's taken place before. So are we going to get Connie Nielsen, Robin Wright? Are we going to see some of those people, you know, some of those ladies again? I don't know. Who knows what's going to be happening with that? That's the question I have as well. But I was intrigued, even though I've not... I, I never got into Game of Thrones. I just thought, well, that's a good idea because obviously Game of Thrones, even the last series that came out, was huge. It was huge. So it was huge for HBO Max. So why not capitalize on that style and put it in Themyscira? I actually think that is a very smart idea. Then we got Batman, the brave and the bold, which when I first saw that, I was like, really? Really? We're going to have like this the brave and the bold Batman? That's what they're going with. Obviously, you think about the cartoon. That's immediately what I thought of. That's what other people thought of, too. But apparently not so much. It's not going to be that. My first thought was just give me that live action blue and gray suit. I want to see blue and gray. Can we get that suit? Huh? Jimmy Guns? Jimmy Guns, give us the blue and gray suit. Live action. And we only, the only time that we had it was with Adam West. Let's, it's, try, it's time to bring it back. You know, I've been wanting to, you know, I, I'm not saying it has to be bright blue. You know, I said this yesterday on Film Junkie Live. It doesn't, no, not bright blue, but like a dark navy blue kind of kind of uh, color scheme. But yes, the brave and the bold is the introduction of the DCU Batman, said Gunn, of Bruce Wayne, and also introduces our favorite Robin, Damian Wayne. What? That's right. They are skipping all the other Robins. They're like, we don't need Dick. Jason or Tim, you know, they're going to go right to Damien. That's right. They're going to do a father son movie. Interesting. Who is a uh, little son of a bitch. That's what James Gunn said. Of course he is. We know if you've read any of that stuff or watch any of the animated stuff, he is a little son of a bitch. The movie will take uh, will take inspiration from the now classic Batman run written by Grant Morrison that introduced Batman to a to a son he never knew existed, a murderous tween raised by assassins. It's a very strange father and son story. So it's like one of those things again, like what are you going to do with with Wonder Woman? Okay, we're going to do this style thing like that. I'm like, all right, smart. What are you going to do with Batman? Especially Batman. Batman has been done to death. What do you do with that? Oh, you're going to do this story with his son. Okay. Should be interesting. That, that could be a good marketing point. It's like for the general audience that doesn't know that Batman actually has a son, that he, do, that he eventually turns into Robin. Hey, you know? It'd be a good introduction. I'm actually kind of, I'm intrigued by it. Being a Batman fan, I'm kind of like, all right, well, okay. Let's see who the director is first off. Gareth Edwards? I don't know. Just get somebody in there that, that you know, can do some, uh, what, Mr. Leitch? Uh, yeah, anybody, you know, you know, let's get some good fight choreography. That's all I want. But that means the Bat family is already out there. The Bat family is there. But then, of course, you know, James Gunn did say that they want to work with Ben Affleck again maybe i don't know ben affleck is pretty busy obviously with his production company with matt damon that he's doing so i don't know if that's actually going to be the case but you know you just never know maybe ben affleck would want to direct a batman movie that he's not starring in i mean obviously we wanted to see his batman movie but now that that's uh not happening at least in a live action film 
medium, but you know, maybe it could happen in some other kind of like animation or uh, or graphic novel. Maybe he could be brought in to do that. I don't know. And importantly, it will feature a Batman not played by Robert Pattinson. So then, of course, they talk about the Batman sequel. Pattinson will continue to play the Dark Knight in at least one more crime saga movie directed by Matt Reeves. That movie, the executives revealed, will be released on October 3rd couple days after my birthday but i'm guaranteeing you this freaking release date is going to probably change too and be entitled the batman part two 2025 is going to be very big year for dc uh said uh you know saffron said superman and batman within the same year so there you go we got that and then we got booster gold we all knew that this was going to be happening right this is right up james gunn's alley uh obviously like a lot of people i mean so many people with a hyperbole thinking that uh, and i've been saying hyperbole like crazy because fans hyperbole just go hand in hand everybody just wants to just just exaggerate everything everybody kept on saying that james gunn's gonna have the same tone for everything it's like no uh different tones for different things Booster Gold, though, is a James Gunn, to- you know, if you've read any Booster Gold or know anything about the character, yeah, it's very much up the alley of that. An HBO Max series based on the unique and lower-tiered hero created in 1986, Saffron said the series is about a loser from the future who uses basic future technology to come back to today and pretend to be a superhero. Uh, and then, of course, imposter syndrome as a su- superhero. And hopefully... Because he did, he did mention that Blue Beetle kind of starts off the new wave. So hopefully we can have a Blue Beetle and, uh, you know, Booster Gold team up. You can't miss that opportunity, right? And then this was a, a crazy one right here. Supergirl, uh, Woman of Tomorrow. I have not read this book by Tom King, but uh, it's taking cues from that recent miniseries that he wrote. This movie project promises to have a different take that uh, a different take than uh, what most of think about the idea of Superman's cousin comes to mind. We will see the difference between Superman, who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents from the time he was an infant, versus Supergirl raised on a rock, a chip off Krypton, off of Krypton, and who watched everyone around her die, dark, and be killed in terrible ways, dark. For the first 14 years of her life and then come to Earth. She is much more hardcore and not the Supergirl we're used to. Looking forward to that. The question is, do they utilize Sasha Kaye? That's oh, that's going to be everybody's question right there. And I feel sorry for Sasha Kaye because if they don't announce that it is she is going to be this Supergirl, she's going to be getting asked that like crazy when it comes to press for the Flash. So hopefully they clarify that before the press for the flash but you know we will see and then of course we have swamp dang swamp dang a horror film that promises to close out the first part of the first chapter so that's going to be closing out the first chapter swamp dang so that means what the second chapter or the second half of the chapter is going to lead into justice league dark i'm hoping for that but uh yeah I'm actually surprised because I don't know, I'm not going to say anything, but I kind of caught wind of who might be directing this, but I'm not going to say it because I don't know if that was actually supposed to be mentioned. And, uh, and then of course we had James Gunn. He, uh, posted, he posted a video talking about all this. So that was pretty cool. Swamp thing is going to be super dark. Hopefully it will be swamp thing. Better be practical. How do you make I mean, it could be somewhat practical clay, but you still have to have some of the effects, you know. You're going to have to have a good balance of practical and, VF- and uh, you know, CGI. I think that's what you need right there. But are you talking about maybe maybe the uh, um, you're talking about the main look of them? Hopefully, yeah, a lot of prosthetics and stuff like that. But there's going to be some CGI with that, too, of course. Yeah, you got to have a mixed bag of that. Yeah, mostly, but it's got to be a little bit of that. Swamp Thing, uh, oh, you want me to play Swamp Thing? I don't think I'll play. I'm not big enough. I'm not tall enough. Uh, before audiences get those films, uh, series, however, uh, there's a matter of these year. this year's, you know, obviously talking about the, th- the four movies that are coming out this year, and they had a comment on it. And, uh, you know, obviously they had to be talking about that. There's nothing that prohibits that from happening. So obviously they're still going to be supporting the four movies that are coming out this year. It is interesting. This whole thing is all very interesting. I know a lot of people were like, how dare they do this when they got four movies coming out this year? But they have to do it. That's just the way it is. Uh, He also said 
the four leads of those films could potentially continue playing their leading roles in, in DCU projects down the line. There is nothing that prohibits that from happening. So a lot of people are going like, what, Ezra Miller is still going to be playing Flash? I think that's still very much up in the air. Obviously, they talk about it right here, uh, found themselves investigations and all that. Saffron said the executives remain hopeful Miller was on a path to betterment. Ezra is completely committed to their recovery. We are fully supportive of that journey they are they are uh, on right now. When the time is right, then they are uh, when they are ready to have that discussion, we will all figure out what the best path forward. But right now, they are completely focused on their recovery and in our conversation with them in the last couple of months it feels like they are making enormous progress. So a little light on the end of the tunnel right there. So the duo discussed the approach of casting, whether it was returning on, uh, or new actors. The TV series will look to cast actors who will also play the parts on the big screen, just as John Cena played the violent peacemaker and blah, blah, blah. Talking about lanterns and all that stuff. We don't want the series to feel in any way like stepchildren or lesser than said gun it's just another way to tell the story and they took uh they took on to the touchy the here comes all right so here comes the henry cavill part here comes the henry cavill part and it's interesting because thr didn't have the full full quote because i remember like uh i was looking at screen rant and they even talk about ben affleck a little bit and saying that ben and henry are not part of this universe uh even though you think like man if there's like a damian wayne you know, Ben Affleck could, you know, Bat Batfleck could actually fit into this uh, story. But he said right here, we didn't fire Henry. Henry was never cast. For me, it's about who do I want to cast as Superman and who do the filmmakers we have want to cast. And for me, for this story, it isn't Henry. And then he continued by saying, I like Henry. I think he's a great guy. I think he's getting dicked around. I think he's getting dicked around by a lot of people, including the former regime at this company. But this Superman is not Henry for a number of reasons. Whoa, watch out. Jays, look at this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so pretty much, uh, yeah, James Gunn was just... Get I don't know. You're not talking about Henry Cavill. I'm just saying he's just like, hey, we didn't fire him. And see, that's the thing is like a lot of people and I've been seeing this today. So what I want to say about when it comes to Henry Cavill is the fact that the matter is, is when it comes to contracts and all this kind of stuff, I mean, we, we, we go back and forth with this. I mean, people still say that Ray Fisher was, was fired, even though it's like, no, he wasn't fired. He just, he did, he said he didn't want to do anything that had Hamada's name to it. So he dug his heels in, which I respect that more than being fired. He wasn't fired because Andy Muschietti wanted him to be in the Flash movie, and they talked, and they had a conversation. Ray Fisher even said they had a conversation, but the fact of the matter is, is Ray didn't want to be a part of it, so he wasn't fired. So then when it comes to Henry Cavill, I see what they're saying right here. It's like, no, didn't fire him because guess what? And then, of course, the dicking around from other people. Yes, Warner Brothers, since 2017, been dicking around with him. And obviously he wanted to play Superman and then just nothing was happening. Like, what the hell? So when it when it comes to Henry Cavill uh, and the power and then, like I've said this before, when it came to his cameo in Black Adam, I had kept on saying that he's not going to agree to it unless there's actually a contract. And sadly, there was never a contract. It was just like a power move. Uh, you had Dwayne Johnson and you had Seven Buck Productions that were really trying to get the whole DC Universe kind of thing. And I think they kind of used Henry Cavill a little bit to try to get that power struggle. They try to use him as, you know, it was like a little bit of that because, I mean, I don't know what's happening with the representation when it comes to the Garcias anymore. I don't know. I know there's been, like, ups and... There's been rumors that, you know, completely dropped that, but it could be for other reasons. Who knows? But I've, I've always said that, yes, they, they... It was always that, and he just agreed to, like... Obviously, he got paid. He got paid a good amount of money, but there was never a contract, which I thought... I thought he wouldn't do it without the contract, but there never was a contract, sadly. So then when it came to Gunn and Saffron coming in, I mean, let's face it. I'm not saying I'm not fully backing up 
gun here and th saying that, oh yeah, he wanted Henry. He definitely did. No, I think he all. I think they always wanted to have their own Superman. One hundred percent. I I I believe that. I believe that. I believe that one hundred percent. That it, they 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 wanted to start fresh when it came to Superman for sure. But it's just. But I agree with them when when it comes to Henry was dicked around big time when it came to. A bunch of people and I, you feel sorry for him but i think henry would be okay he got paid at least you know he got paid good he got paid well so i hopefully he'll be okay when it comes to all that but yeah it's all just it's it's just crazy it's just crazy but um you know he still of course will always be my favorite superman we'll see what the new superman is like but yeah yeah so but anyways continuing on as the executives uh, also try to walk the line of if and how to deal with the actors who stepped into controversy <laughs> with Shazam, Zachary Levi being the most recent example on the weekend, of course. I talked about this yesterday. I haven't posted the clip yet, but this is a good answer right here from Gunn. He says, actors, filmmakers, and I work that, that I work with are going to say things that I agree with and things I don't agree with. So, obviously, yes. Gun being, you know, obviously old tweets coming out and him getting fired from Disney. He knows what this is like. So he's just kind of going like, I'm not going to get into it. Zachary Levi said what he said. I'm just, you know, I don't, I can agree. I can disagree. Very well said. And I was trying to say that yesterday of being like trying to be devil's advocate when it came to what Zachary Levi said. If you didn't catch what I said yesterday, you could check out Film Junkie Live yesterday, but I will be posting a Film Junkie shot of it um, tomorrow. So look forward to that if you didn't catch it already. I can't be changing my plans all the same time because an actor says something that I don't agree with. At the same token, if someone is doing something that is morally uh, reprehensible, that's a different story. And we have to take that into account. So yeah, if it's something really, really bad, like they engaged in and there's allegations or whatever the hell, then yeah, you take, you know, but if it's something of an opinion, guess what? Leave it be, leave it be. The duo are working uh, in one DC universe. Some stories will stand apart. Reeves' Batman movies and Todd Phillips' sequel to The Joker will fall under a banner titled DC Elseworlds. I'm glad they're actually using that. I hope there's a logo. Please, let there be a logo. Let there be a logo for DC Elseworlds. Come on. Do it. Which will, just like in the comics, uh, fall outside the larger continuity of the DCU. The Black Superman project, written by Ta-Nehisi Coates under the previous regime, remains in active development and would also fall under the category as well. So, like, so apparently that's still happening? I don't know. All right. I guess that's still happening. They talk about Teen Titans Go, and then it says the bar... Is going to be very high for projects to be outside the DCU, uh, the Elseworlds project, says Saffron. But every now and then, there will be something that lives up to that. So, there you go. So, the bar is going to have to be pretty high. They're going to have to really want that story. So, uh, then they talk about superhero fatigue. And then Gunn said, it's not the gun verse. It's not. It's got to be all these different feels from all these different stories. That is... That's what makes it fun. The stories are completely different, and each has the individual expression of the writers and the director that are making those projects. Thank you. Okay, so, yeah, the people out there with the hyperbole that say, like, hey, everything's going to be James Gunn's tone. No, it's not. No, it's not. I mean, you could still hate them, but just don't do that. Don't say that. Stop it. Stop it. We're not stupid. Not every filmmaker is going to be happy because if our, or like not every filmmaker is going to be happy because if someone is doing something that isn't working, we're going to be honest. Ooh, that should be interesting. Uh, Gun and Saffron's hirings were the culmination of over a half year quest by Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav to find someone to lead a screen division of DC. In his own words, Zaslav was looking for a Kevin Feige, the storied and a successful, of course, blah, 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 and then landed, of course, with uh, that. Zaslav had a vision in mind of a standalone studio that would have everything DC centralized, Saffron said, and that was the appeal 
for us, coming in and having access to any character, any story, and to tell the stories we wanted to uh, tell across all the mediums, which is good. Gunn said, the history of DC is pretty messed up. This is where he gets candid. Okay, we got Gunn right here getting candid about the previous regime. So uh, buckle in, folks. I'm sure you guys already read this. The history of DC is pretty messed up, referring to the turmoil, obviously, of all the things not, the connectivity and all that stuff like that, that uh, was plaguing, uh, of course, with everything. There was filmmaker Zack Snyder's multi, uh, multi-movie multi universe that uh, sputtered halfway through. There was an attempt course correction, attempted course correction by Joss Whedon that maybe made things worse. There the uh, several changes in the studio leadership and ownership, and there was the Arrowverse, the successful. Uh, this it was it was successful of of course the niche TV and DC that aired of course and all that for the past decade. No one was minding the mint, said Gunn. They were giving away IP like they were party favors at any creator who smiled at them. Ouch! So he's given the business to the higher ups to that regime. For Gunn, being handed the keys to the comic book universe are like something out of, the, uh, out of a childhood dream. And, of course, they give some backstory and everything like that. But I do like the fact that he did kind of do that. And I know some people might try to spin it like, what, is he throwing shame at the creators? No. He was just saying, like, you know, after the whole, I mean, I, you better believe that when, he, when Gunn gets in interviews, of course he's going to praise what Zack did. They are friends. They are acquaintances. They've worked together. Just like Zack will give praise to James Gunn. Probably gave him, hey, go for it, man. Looking forward to seeing what you do. It's probably what Zack, I wouldn't be, like, I've told you guys, I would not be surprised. And from what I gathered, it probably did happen is James Gunn actually talked to Zack about all this. But Zack's busy making his own stuff. While this is all happening, so. Gunn now wants to bring the magic of connection of uh, movie going and TV watching audiences by revamping DC Studios in a way that hasn't been done before. Uh, I have an incredibly deep connection to these characters, to these stories, and to wanting to create that type of magic, not only in the kid that I was, but in the connection that I had with my father, with my friends later on. And in wanting to create a unified world in DC where we tell stories. So in the end, both Gunn and Saffron know not only what uh, is at stake, but also the enormous opportunity being presented to them. For Saffron, it's a chance to impact and change the culture, be it the company culture of how it approaches storytelling to the broader pop culture. So there you go. And then Gunn lit up uh, the giddiness uh, at the pure, pure magic of, of it all. This is not only a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's the only opportunity. It's me now. No one has ever gotten to do this before, and how could I say no to that? Whoa. So there you go. There you go right there. So uh, there you go. So how are we feeling about that, huh? Gunn calls out uh, the past regime, praises Zach's films, trigger warning. Yeah, I know. And you better believe that he would. He would do that. He definitely would do that. He definitely would praise all that and everything. So, fortunately, it's getting... (laughs) So, uh, we got William here. Mm -hmm. So, how are we feeling? So, still sad there, Jacob? Okay. Well, I don't know exactly what, 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 what you want. I don't know. Making his own stuff because the Warner regime pushed him. Yeah, exactly. So... As long as he doesn't cancel Superman and Lois. No, I think he also mentioned that. Uh, I think he also mentioned that uh, uh, the whole thing about uh, that it might have like two seasons left. You know, I think he mentioned that. Um, talking about that, you know, another thing that another thing that uh, James Gunn said about the Flash movie. He said it's one of the greatest comic book movies ever. What? One of the greatest comic book movies ever i mean my god well that should be interesting Ooh, i mean i know some people are now you know kind of wondering like really what the fuck yeah apparently um that's what he said too he said that uh the flash is one of the greatest comic book movies ever it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out i mean obviously we're all looking forward i mean not all of us are looking forward to it but i'm looking forward to it just to see that because it's gotten praised many times when it comes to when it comes to the test screenings so i don't know that's just crazy for him to say that during all this during to tr- trying to launch a new wave of 
the DC Universe, he gives big time praise to the Flash. Very interesting. He also said that, yes, the Flash will hit the reset button, which, you know, a lot of us were kind of assuming, you know. I'm just thinking that uh, when it comes to the Flash, I think Andy Muschietti has very much been like, all right, we have the Snyderverse, we have these other verse, and this preserves the Snyderverse. Like, it's going to have the most Snyderverse in it, which is what I keep saying to people. It's going to have, you know, Snyderverse stuff like that right there. It's going to have that preserved. So you just never know. And I just still think, and I will always say this, I just would not be surprised if down the road some of these people come back. Some of them come back. Just some of them. So, yeah, it just sounds like it's going to be, yeah, it's not rebooting everything. It's just kind of hitting that little reset button, but everything's preserved. Again, multiverse, multiverse. Stop it. Think any Muschietti would be involved in the new DCU? Maybe. You never know. If they have a Justice League movie that's going to be coming out, you never know what uh, what could be happening with that. You just never freaking know. So, I don't know. We'll see. Movie uh, gets any praise. Movie gets any praise? Okay. Uh, Man is still too elsewhere. I don't think they're going to do that, dude. They're already, they have like another Superman that's that's going to be in Elseworlds films. I know you want Man of Steel 2 big time, but it just seems like that's not going to be happening. I, th- it, I think the Elseworlds films are going to be like, they're going to be a high bar and low low budget. So, but uh, if they're going to do an Elseworlds film that has to, that has anything that to do with Superman, it's going to be like a Lex Luthor thing or something like that. I don't know. But uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, there's some things here, too, on the D.C. website that talked about all that stuff. Um, I think uh, that we've gotten lucky with the next four movies because we have Shazam, which leads into The Flash, which resets everything, which then goes into Blue Beetle, which is uh, totally disconnected from everything that came before and can be a part of the D.C.U. So Blue Beetle is safe, which goes into Aquaman, which leads in. Okay, and then there's no mention of anything when it comes to Aquaman. They just go right to it. But Peter Saffron said that Jason Momoa is, in fact, still Aquaman and the fact that that Jason Momoa always saw Aquaman as a trilogy. So that's the biggest question. I think the biggest question is where does Aquaman, Jason Momoa's Aquaman, fit when it comes to all this? That's the biggest question, I think, at least for me. I'm like, where does that fit? Because we know that there's a possibility that there might be multiple Bruce Waynes in there, too. It might be Michael Keaton, might be Ben Affleck. What's going on? Which one? You know, we got the five foot eight guy or we got the six foot four guy. What? Which one? We got both. What's going on? Cool. All right. I'll take both. You know, we got the guy with the good chin or the guy with the good lips. Sorry. Anyways, I, so that's what's weird. I don't know. Uh, but the one thing that could be a uh, promise is, uh, that everything from our first project forward will be canon and will be connected. We're using some actors from the past. So it's not a full reboot. That's the thing. It's not exactly a full reboot. So I'm curious on who's going to be coming back. I mean, obviously a lot of people are wondering about Gal. Is Gal going to be coming back? And I, you know, from what I gather is like, if Patty's not coming back, Gal probably won't come back. I don't know. Um, but I think they, they're leaving that, that door open because this whole prequel series on Themyscira is before she was born and very much could lead into that. So it, it, that's going to be curious, too, because who are they going to cast in those uh, characters? Are they going to use the same ones? Connie Nielsen, Robert, Robin, um, Robin Wright. So, Jen A. Um, anyways, we're uh, yeah using some of that. And then, of course, the key parts and talking about that. <coughs> But yeah, I just, it's going to be crazy to see. uh, I think the thing that I'm most curious about, obviously Batman, Batman, uh, the brave and the bold. I'm just really curious. I'm like, all right, make, and I, I was talking about this with other Batman fans too. It's like, all right, you know, we have, we have this darker, more grounded Batman over here. We've had the dark, you know, the grounded Batman, of course, with Bale. Um, Zach was trying to, you know, he was, when it comes to Batfleck, uh, obviously, you know, that's my favorite version because I think it was a good balance of like, yeah, it's grounded, but, you know, he, he, 
he does do some pretty crazy things, obviously, that humans couldn't do. So it's not like uh, it's not like it's fully grounded. But he had a little bit of that, too, because his stories were somewhat grounded when it comes to like the politics of superheroes and whatnot. So I just want that. That's what I'd want. I want that when it comes to this brave and bold series. I want like I want a fantastical Batman that, you know, I want it like animated series almost. I want it kind of like that where it's like, okay, you can have a little bit of groundedness, but, you know, I want to see some grappling hook action. I want some craziness like that. I do want that. And then, like I said, try to make the blue suit happen. Try to make the blue and gray suit happen. Just do it. Dark, dark blue, navy blue. Just make it happen. That's what I want. That's what I want. So... Or anything else? I think that's pretty much, uh, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else to cover when it comes to this? What are we thinking here, huh? What are we thinking? How are we feeling out there? Gun roasted patty and, uh, and GI, I know. I just don't, yeah. Yeah. Actors will do anything for a role. Look at Henry. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The fact that we, uh, will most likely get Nightwing. Yeah, I'm hoping we get a Nightwing. Why not? He's going to call Robin chum, isn't he? I hope not. Don't do that. We don't need to do that. Hey, Dave, do you think for the new Superman suit, uh, for this suit, uh, this new DCU, will uh, be a more classic or more modern? Good question. That's 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 the thing, too. A lot of people are worrying about the chonies, the, the, the Superman chonies coming back. I don't know. Are they going to bring the undies back? The red undies. Henry's not coming back to DC. Let's face reality. Um, I wouldn't put it, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to rule it out. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not banking on it. I'm not banking on it, Stephanie, but I'm just looking at it like I'm not going to rule it out. You know, especially when James Gunn was uh, teasing the whole Kingdom Come thing twice. Like he posted an image of Kingdom Come twice. You know, I was like, to me, I was like, ah, I would not be surprised because obviously, what has what has been huge over there over at the Marvel machine? Look what happened with Spider-Man No Way Home. The fact that we had previous Spider-Man come back and then we're going to get Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine. I mean, that's that's one of those things where it's like, you know, it's a crowd cheering moment in the movie theater. So um, obviously, when it came to Black Adam and the cameo of Superman showing up and Henry Cavill, I mean, in my theater, there was cheers. Um, a lot of people talked about there was cheers and everything like that. So they're just you just never know if they're going to be dealing with multiverse stuff. You just never know. But I'm not going to be like sitting there like going waiting like where's Cavill? You know, I'm not going to just wait for it, obviously. But you just never know. You never know with these movies. That's the way I'm going to look at it. So the dude to the red trunks, I would prefer it be more of boxer. <laughs> yeah, it could be interesting. Yeah, that, you know, 10 years versus uh, $50 billion in debt. Yeah, we'll see. I'm sure these budgets are going to be pretty low. Only if Alex Ross is involved. Maybe Zach uh, was just cooking a turkey. Yeah, he was. He was just cooking a turkey. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. It's like when that, well, what was that like? How long ago was that when we saw Zach in the turkey? And then, of course, he had the crisis uh, book in the background. And it was like, yeah, that was that was a little while ago. It was a while ago. And I was like, it was like one of those things where it's just like he did that because he knows that it's like, all right, if you have that in the background, it could stir up some shit. You realize that, OK, Zach went through a lot of shit when it came to Warner Brothers. He went through a lot of shit. Obviously, we know the shit that he went through. So to just kind of poke the bear, to poke the bear with just one image, it just kind of shows you right there. And, and, and I love it. And I love the fact that he could just poke the bear with one image because then all of a sudden it's like with that one image and having the book in the background, people started going crazy. And then it's like Warner Brothers is like, ah, Jesus. Again, again, this guy. We can't get rid of this guy. What the hell? You know? It's a fact that he could just poke the bear and he's good at poking the bear. Obviously, you know, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have got the Snyder cut. If it wasn't for him posting images from the Snyder cut, we wouldn't have got the Snyder cut. So he helped. He likes to poke the bear. He pokes the bear, the WB bear. 
But right now, I'm just like, I'm still just like, I mean, obviously, there were some people, you know, within the community, and I, I even tweeted out too, because, you know, when it comes to Snyderverse things, obviously, with this new lineup and everything, I'm just, it was just kind of like, a, you know, when I'm seeing some other people who are more in touch with Zach and everything, and they're going, hey, hashtag thank you, Zach, and everything, I did the same thing. I'm like, yep. Bring on, bring on Rebel Moon, bring on the Armyverse, let's do this. I'm all about what the future of what Zach is working on. And he just, you know, and then you never know. You never know. Obviously, Zach on the Vodka stream has expressed that he would come back and do some DC stuff. Um, his thing that he said he wanted to do was do an actual adaptation of The Dark Knight Returns, which would be pretty damn sweet because that's his favorite, favorite book. But yeah. But he better believe that he probably, you know, I just, I have a feeling that James Gunn and him probably had a conversation or two when it came to all this, because let's face it, the Snyderverse is never going to fully die. It's never going to fully die, especially if they're still using actors that have been within that universe. Zach is, very, we all know Zach's just awesome at casting. He just knows how to cast very well. It doesn't matter if you're a name or not. If he feels that you're part, if you're, you embody this role, then guess what? You got it, so... You got it, but 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 yeah, I know. But but the Scoopsy Daisy said, but 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 Scoopsy scoop, the the Scoopsy Daisy said. Uh, so everybody said, uh, what are we talking about? The new Fifty Two suit. Yeah, I wonder what they're gonna base the suit on. It's gonna be interesting. Guns DCU plan is forever going to be stuck with uh, DCU Snyderverse of baggage because he and Peter Peter didn't cut their losses in Hard Reboot. Yeah, well. But it sounds like they're okay with that. It sounds like they're okay with that. It's like one of those things where I even thought about that too, like even before. It's like, all right, if they could just do like different stories with the same actors, I'm, I just kind of go like, why not? Why not? I don't need it to be like the Marvel machine. I never wanted it to be like the Marvel machine. I really did not, but hey. Um, let's see, but uh, I do, before we wrap it up here, I know DC Comics Twitter handle, let's see, they were like posting images, kind of like little mock-up little things here, I think, right? Yeah, so they were kind of just doing this, and it was cool, but it was just, it, it's not like, it's nothing like, I don't like too crazy, but it was just kind of cool that they were, they were posting, um, I mean, first off, obviously, it, it started off with uh, James Gunn. They retweeted that. 3.3 million views. Superman Legacy. Uh, they're posting that. So they were posting, like, little images from uh, from the source material. The Authority right here, of course, showing that group, which is pretty cool. Like I said, I'm not familiar with this group, so I'm going to get familiar with them. Like I said, they're kind of, like, uh, known as, like, you know, a little bit of an anti-Justice League. So, uh, And then, of course, we've got the Brave and the Bold. We're going to see, like, I mean, we're going to see stuff like this. Damien and Bruce fighting. Father and son. That's a fresh take on Batman. I'm just saying. Like, when I heard that, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, and then there was, like, things that were going around that it might be the Dick Grayson version. That would be a that would be another freaking curveball if they, 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 they went with that story where, like, it's Dick Grayson and, you know, they're trying to find Bruce or something like that. And I don't know. They could do something like that. I mean, that would be another curveball. But, I mean, if, like, you're going to do something different with Batman, why not uh, incorporate that? Of course, uh, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow right there. Look at that. She's got blood on her. So that's going to be a dark tale. But the question is, is who's playing Supergirl? Who's playing that? Of course, Swamp Thing, You Make My Heart Sing. Uh, and then, of course, we saw the first image from the animated show. Waller, of course, they were just saying, hey, get to know these characters. This is a pretty cool shot right here. I like this. So the lanterns showing uh, Jordan. Uh, showing Jordan and uh, and um, uh, what's his name? Totally, you know, obviously you guys know what I'm talking about. Jeez. Uh, but, yeah, so I don't know. I'm like, what, are, what are issue is this from? Because we got Hal Jordan with uh, with the uh, the beard right here. So, Interesting. I don't know. Might have to pick that up. That's a good cover right there, huh? I know. Is it going to be Sasha Kaye? Mm. That might not go over well. That might not go over well. So, and then we got Paradise Lost right here. Yeah, got Paradise Lost. It's cool. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, thank you for mentioning that Jacob R. 
is uh, they did mention they did mention uh, about uh, there was a question there was a little question and answer kind of thing and they were talking about that they said probably two movies and two HBO Max series per year talking about that uh, and then they said, how about they decide which medium is used, you know? So he said, it's all story based to us. Storytelling is 100% King. So if uh, a story is more complicated, like the lanterns or Waller story it has more of an independent TV vibe, like booster gold, then that's more suited for television. Just kind of talking about that. So they went back and forth, kind of talking about that on how they decide on ratings on whether something should be live action or animated. It depends on the story. We're going to give every story uh what it deserves some things we know superman is definitely something we know would be pg-13 so i'm going to make sure it is other things like the waller show are a bit more mature so good we're gonna have some r-rated content we love that uh, so then of course they decided that uh it would be way too costly for the creature commandos to be uh live action so yeah do animation so that's good and let's see, the Batman's not a stepchild. They don't want to do that. They don't want to make it like they, they're they very excited because Matt Reeves, he's been working hard on it. He came and pitched us some amazing stuff the other day. So our plan is to continue, is for that to continue. So here it is right here. The Jason Momoa Lobo Rumors. Remember? I mean, we were just like, Jason Momoa, he likes to stir it up a little bit because he's Jason Momoa. He likes to get all happy posting those Instagram videos. But Gunn said right here, Jason, Jason eh, will not play two characters. Aww. <laughs> At least not right now. At least not right now. It's too early to say. Saffron says, Jason always thought Aquaman was uh, a trilogy in his mind, but he also loves Lobo. It's been very clear about that too. He's never going to play two characters. But we'll figure it out after Aquaman 2. So there might be still a chance. You never know. You never know. So, um, and then of course, talking about the Flash and the Else Worlds. We already talked about that. We had an input in there for sure. It changes the Flash. So, yeah, there's going to be some changes to the Flash. Okay. Yeah. They're not going to be drastic or major changes like some of the scoopsy daisies were trying to say. Uh, not going to be major, but. Yeah, there's definitely going to be something interesting. I'm just wondering now, is is uh, Cavill's cameo going to be removed? Most likely, probably. We had an input for sure, but there's nothing we had to do in order to set up our universe. So, yeah, we're very close to Andy Muschietti and Barbara Muschietti, uh, the director and producer of The Flash, and he's going to be doing some more stuff for us. Justice League, I'm just saying. You might as well get Andy for Justice League. It's just the way I'm thinking of it. You know, we heard the rumors. I just would not be surprised if he ends up doing that. About the writers helping build the universe. So then we got writers right here. Here's a list of the writers. And uh, one name, I was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, we have Tom King, which is cool. Comic book writer. He has been a partner throughout of all of this. He was giving me answers to shit before I took this job. So it's me, him, Crystal Henry, who worked on Watchmen. Uh, Christina Hodson, of course who helped write The Flash, Drew Goddard. Drew Goddard, right there, who you probably know. So, yes, we know that name. Obviously, you know, he uh, that name has been uh, thrown around big time. Talented dude. Jeremy Slater, who just uh, did Moon Knight. That's the group of people we've been meeting with and putting all of this together. So some good writers. Good writer's room when it comes to all this. So at least they have that. So on the differences between projects, of course, we kind of talked about that. So, yeah, that's pretty much it right there. Okay. So there we go, guys. That's pretty much all of it right there. I think we're all good. Christina Hodson and uh, <laughs> Draga. I think it'll be okay. Hopefully it'll be okay. I know a lot of us are kind of like, oh, boy, birds of prey. Mm, yeah. Yeesh. Like, watch out. I'm just kidding. It looks like it's going to run from uh, 300. Hmm. Interesting. All right. RJ digs it. So it's going to be hilarious seeing people freak out that someone other than Snyder will be doing a jail movie. Well, you know, that's just the way it is. I'm concerned that you're not posting your own thoughts, just responses. I don't know. Jose and Eric, are you guys going back and forth again? Uh, see, but see, Jacob, you enjoyed Birds of Prey. That's good. Fingers crossed. My queen, Shana Hudson, suck on that. Okay. So you guys like, uh, you guys do like, um, 
you know, you like uh, the back of, you know, at least Birds of Prey. I'm going to have to give it a shot again. I mean, I just wish there was like a director's cut because I could tell that that thing was just chopped up, snip, snip, doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I just wish there was. Bumblebee Rider. Yeah, a lot of people love Bumblebee, but I was like, uh, I was, I was, I'm not one of them. I mean, obviously you got Haley Steinfeld, which, you know, obviously, and I liked her. But I was like, I, I was not over the moon about Bumblebee. It just was like that traditional story, that E.T. type story. Uh, Alex uh, Lopez, thank you for the $2 super chat. Chris Pratt for Booster Gold. I know a lot of people are already saying that. It works. It does work. I could totally see him in the role. And I like Chris Pratt, but I'm like, we need somebody else. We just need somebody else. I actually like John Krasinski, but I think they're going to go for somebody probably uh, younger. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Pratt fits he fits the role but i'm just kind of like yeah i just don't know i i don't think that's going to be the case so anyways uh, bumblebee movie was good okay yeah if you enjoyed it, it's fine it's not like it was terrible speaking of Haley steinfeld i'm finally watching hawkeye yeah i liked her in hawkeye i actually did enjoy hawkeye younger for booster gold i don't know i don't know how young they'll go for these roles who knows but uh alan rich oh there you go that's not a bad that's not bad Alan Richson, yeah, that's a good choice. He could probably pull off a good booster gold. And, of course, he's got a superhero physique, for God's sakes. So I thought Pratt would be Hal, yeah. I think Chris Pratt's going to be probably fan cast as a few people here, at, you know, mainly those two. So Pratt will be busy. Yeah, right, too busy doing the Mario sequel. I know, it takes a lot of time. You know, you go into a booth, they hand you a bag of money, and that's it. Um, Dave, look at the creature commandos picture for a second. Well, look at the older human thinking about Gunn saying he talked with Henry about future roles. So you think of that Henry Cavill is going to be in, be in like a live action of, of creature commandos. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Uh, now Booster Gold should be a late thirties, early forties. Now nah, he's, uh, too ripped. Booster Gold isn't ripped. Yeah. Because he's a fake superhero, right? Yeah. So, I mean, like, Richardson has that, he has that, he, he could have the co comic timing, but, yeah, it's like Booster Gold is not supposed to be, like, a legit superhero. So, I know he'd uh, never do it, but Ryan Gosling, <laughs> that'd be interesting. Ryan Gosling, Booster Gold, that would definitely be interesting. Yeah, sounds like you want it to flop. Uh, well, let's not start arguing now, guys. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good. Anyways, guys, all right. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Like I said, this was just uh, normally I'm not doing uh, Tuesday vo uh, vodka streams, Film Junkie Lives. But, of course, today was a big day. So I'll be back tomorrow, too, to uh, talk about other things. We'll probably be talking more about, about uh, the DC slate and everything like that. So I'll be back tomorrow with a normal stream with uh, topics and everything. And of course, we'll do the members only stream as well right after it. So uh, thank you guys, of course, for uh, for spending some time with me today talking about all this craziness. Go ahead and uh, smash that like thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Do all that and everything. And uh, it's going to be okay, guys. It's going to be okay. If you're done with it, be done with it. Don't discourage others. If you're excited about it, good. I'm glad you're excited. Overall, I'm just kind of like, not bad. Not bad. Actually better than I was I was I was preparing for the worst. Not gonna lie, I was preparing for the worst, but I'm actually okay, not too shabby. Okay. I'm just happy that Matt Reeves in his Batman universe stays where it does. That's that's what I'm most happy about. And we're gonna get another Batman. You know I'm all about that. Alright guys, love ya. I'll see you tomorrow. Same junkie time. Well, not the same junkie time, normal junkie time. Alright, talk to you later. <laughs>